Greetings, Earthforms, and this is Jetstream. And this is Techie Guy, and the movie we'll be looking at today will be... Bionicle's Mask of Light! So many people wanted me to review this movie, and I can see why. Everything about this world is incredible, unique, and really investing. So, what are Bionicles? Well, The Bionicles is a toy series released by the Lego Company. Awesome. Yes, yes, the very same. I made a small appearance, I may add. Did they? Huh. Anyway, first we're checking out the history. Aww. Oh, shut up. You're going to learn something today. Unlike previous LEGO themes of the time, Bionicles was launched with a very deep story in mind and was presented over several different mediums. This ultimately led to LEGO expanding their toy lines with more story-driven models. Set in a sci-fi world featuring the Toa, the heroic biomechanical beings with elemental powers, as they try and fulfill their duty to maintain peace throughout their world. Ah, kind of like the Transformers approach with the cartoons and the toy selling being a huge hit. Exactly. So, the story for Bionicles, however, the first run was published between 2001 and 2010, with the release of the LEGO toys and the direct-to-DVD animated films, starting with The Mask of Light. It first starts off with the narration telling us a little bit about the Bionicles Island, Matanui. For Matanui's brother, the Makuta, was jealous of these honors and betrayed him. Casting a spell over Mata Nui, who fell into a deep slumber. Good night, everybody! It's then the story begins with two small guys known as Matoran. One being Jala, voiced by Andrew Francis, and the other being Takua, voiced by Jason Mikes. Takua is a chronicler, which means that he seeks and records great stories, so he happens to take an interest in a totem that turns out to be the one and only Mask of Light. A chronicler, someone that records historical events and whatnot? Sounds kinda cool. Just dream the chronicler. I like the sound of that. Since when have you taken a liking to history? Taking an interest will help. Not to mention, dare I say, listening. Mm -hmm. And I rest my case. So after risking his life with a hop, skip, and a jump on a stoned path that just so happened to be there, so I guess anyone could have eventually stumbled upon the mask. Well, anyone clumsy enough to drop a priceless totem into lava, I guess. We meet our first Toa, Toa Tahu. <laughs> he has the power element of fire and having the voice of Silverbolt from Beast Wars. Is this view close enough? Hmm. Across here. That's nice. After saving Takua, Tahu expresses the pure importance of having their elders know of the vital life-changing news. This could be important. Take it to Turaga Vakama. After you've won the calling match. <laughs> Whatever. Winning a game is much more important. Of course. Now we have to watch the Coley match, which is a game a little like, um, l lacrosse? How do you play lacrosse anyway? I have no clue. But they, they, they have to score goals to win, and, well, talking about scoring, uh, it looks like we got characters with, dare I say, chemistry. Nice save! <laughs> Not bad. Nothing gets by the captain of the guard, unless he wishes it. I'll keep that in mind. Careful what you wish for, Jala. Now before we continue, allow me to introduce the other cat. Water, Toa Gali. And from the village of stone, Toa Pohatu. What is this happening to me? Well, anyway, the relationship with Toa Tahu and Gali seems... <laughs> Always a pleasure, Gali. Not great. Okay, this is the thing. We don't really get any reasons whatsoever as to why they have a hard time getting along. 
It's just kind of thrown at us and we simply have to accept that's just how it is. But what do I know? Maybe they had a falling out over something important. Like ice cream. Ah, oh, yes. Ice cream. How delightful it is. It's melted. Well, great. There's only one logical explanation for this. This is all your fault. Ah. <sighs> You know, you live in a hot environment, right? With lava. How does that involve me? Reasons, girl. I'm mad at you. Mad at you forever. <sighs> You're a moron. Grrr. Well, anyway, we can only assume and guess it's from the fact that we all know that fire and water can't get along. I guess. Oh. I think my brother is afraid of having his fire extinguished. <laughs> Sister, against me you'd be nothing but steam. Hot air, as they say. Moving on, at the end of the match, the mask is revealed and the Toraga recognizes its power. Sorry, but when it says the mask in capital there, I'm just half expecting, you know. Spoken! Oh yeah, the power of one's nightlight. Hey kids, do you want a nightlight but too embarrassed to show it off? Now you can with the mask of light. Hold it in your hands, put it in your bag, shine in your friend's face. Warning, may cause temporary blindness. My eyes! The mask of light is a lawsuit waiting to happen. Wait, what? Every night's great with your mask of light, which also happens to be a nightlight. The Taraka announced it heralds the arrival of the seventh tower, destined to defeat. Makuta and awaken Matanui. Legends foretell the coming of a seventh Toa, who would bring light to the shadows and awaken Matanui. And so Takua has everyone believe that Jowla is the herald, for some reason. Well, the answer is clear, Jetstream. Takua is a chronicler. He doesn't do missions, he simply records them. Makes sense. Jala was able to convince the elders to bring Takua along, in the hope that he's able to have him take on the responsibility later on. Perfect. While Jala makes history, you will record it. Soon, we will have another great chapter to add to our wall. Yes, Taraga. It will be full of Jala's brave deeds. And thus, sent on a quest to find the seventh tower guided by the mask. In the meantime, Makuta sends three of his Rakshi sons to recover the mask. And sounding pretty damn epic. Go, my sons. Use the shadows. And keep my brother asleep. I'll get you next time, Gali. Next time. During an attack on Takuro, which destroys the village, Tahu gets poisoned, causing him to become increasingly aggressive and worsen his already stained relationship with Gali. My village is gone. Your power was nothing. My power was nothing. And I still want my ice cream. Gali, curse you! Moving on, however, Gala and Takua find themselves in the forest and is helped by Toa Over, Liwa, and the ice Toa, Kopaka. The Toa don't appear for very long, however they do give us enough time to establish their personalities as characters. Liwa being the friendly Tarzan with a weird way of speaking. There'll be no foot walking, just air flying. And Kopaka being the lone hero with the heart of solid ice. We're on a mission. I suppose you've heard of it? No. Oh, that's cold. <laughs> Never change, Kapaka. Well, yes. Liwa seems to be someone that's clearly out of touch with everyone and has his own way of expressing himself, which makes him seem simple but also has a lot of depth. And, well, we can argue that Kapaka is pretty similar and being a bit, you know, isolated. Really, Techie? Yes. Uh, anyway. At the very least, Kopaka temporarily immobilizes the Rakshi by trapping them in a frozen lake. That's cool. It moves. Even I get lucky sometimes. Not luck. 
It's what you do that makes a hero. Wait, so endangering your life makes you a hero? Because that's what Takua just did just now. What an idiot. Anyway, we have Puku rejoin the group while Toa Kapaka bails on them. Screw you guys, going home. After a while, our little heroes travel into Unokuro Highway, where Takua is threatened by Makuta. Shadows are everywhere, and where they are, so am I. How is he doing that? And so Takua abandons Jala in the attempt to shield him. Because of this, Makuta then releases three more Rakshi, who then attack the Earth village of Unokoro. Takua arrives, he finally realizes that he's been a crummy, duty ditching friend, and retreats back to find Jala. Wait, if all the Toa are meant to represent elements, wouldn't Earth and Rock be kind of the same? Uh, anyway, so basically, Kind of pointless, but Takua does realize his duty to Matanui, I, I guess. Oh, I gotta add it in. Add what in? This. Well done! But how did you keep the ceiling from collapsing on us too? <laughs> no idea why I love this scene so much, but it's kind of gold. Um... On a more serious note, the other Toa come into aid, but during the battle, Tahu is further corrupted and goes insane, forcing the Toa to capture him and flee. Gali and the other Toa purge the Rakshi poison from Tahu, resulting in his reconciliation with Gali. So, I guess fire and water hate each other, unless, however, when one is saved by the power of magic bubbles? Bit hard to be a dick to someone who just saved you. Fucking bubbles! Arriving at some great temple at the island center, Jala and Takua are confronted by all six Rakshi. It is there the six Toa mount a united defense and defeat five of them, but the surviving Rakshi attack Takua. It's then Jala sacrifices himself to protect Takua, and Jala's final words prompt Takua to wear the Mask of Flight, becoming Takranova. I'm supposed to make the sacrifice. No. Oh. Duty was mine. You know who you are. You were always different. Takanuva, Toa of Light. After defeating the final Rakshi, he constructs a craft that is sat naved by a worm like creature. It's a real shame, but this is pretty much the only time we get to see this vehicle since, well, he really doesn't have far to go, so kinda pointless. Well, that was pointless. But it does make for a cute reveal of Holly who stole away. You know, the girl we saw for a few minutes. She's a psychic now, and now it's over, because she has to leave to bring the other Toa down. Why didn't they all just tag along anyway? For dramatics? I'm sorry, but what was your excuse again? Not much room in this transport. Where will we all sit, brother? I have but one destiny. Yours lie with the Matoran and the Turaga. Gather them and wait for my return. Ah, I see. You didn't have one. That makes it even worse! No! While Jetstream mind cog break, Makuta and Takanuva hold a Koli match for the island's fate, allowing everyone to watch and witness Takanuva cheat by merging with Makuta to form a single powerful being. That's why I love Crunch! <laughs> with extreme luck, Takanova's willpower was dominant and raises the gate leading deeper underneath the island, which the gathered flee. And I kid you not, for whatever reasons, this guy uses godlike powers to revive Jowler before the gate collapses on top of him. 
Alive, it's alive, it's alive! By the way, does anyone else think this sounds familiar? Get out of there! Get out of there! <laughs> Are they using the same recording twice or what? Are they using the same recording twice or what? The Taraka proceed to awaken Matanui using the Mask of Light, which in turn revives Takanuba. You're alive! Holy head, you could have been Makuta Bones. Could have been, but I'm not. And the film ends with the narrator telling us the discovery of the long dormant city of Metronui, the Matoran's original home. So what can we say about this movie? It's not bad, I mean it goes into detail on many things, such as their way of life and the different habitats. And for what I could see, the story was pretty easy to follow. Would I say it's a family film? No, but this is clearly intended for a specific audience, and I believe that for most people, this would be a little bit on the meh side. However, for nostalgia, it's freaking awesome! Like, oh my gosh, they even got two Shakespeare's working on this! No wonder the film did so good! Um, Jet Stream... No, what? Never mind. The animation is like watching the first Toy Story, which was good back in the day, but looks a little dated now, but still looks pretty good. The characters were grey and likeable. You knew them for the first moments of being around them. That is some great character writing right there. Takuya is surprisingly pretty relatable, and his best friend Jowler is incredibly charming. The best friend that supports Takuya to the bitter end. Takuya was the only one that, who felt like he was going to become the hero. He was clumsy, naive, foolish, and a bumbler. Because, well, he never seemed to fit in. We even get hints of this, his friends are always pulling him into things, and you kind of feel that without his friends, he might have given into some darkness earlier. And because of his friend, he was willing to basically tell the darkness to stuff off. Well, eventually, we also get more hints about him not fitting in, with the few scenes shown of his mask being moved, or knocked about on his face implying that he is struggling with his identity, that like his mask, it doesn't fit him. Well, you see, masks are often symbolic of identity. Most people assume that they're meant to hide your face and reveal another, but more often a mask allows you to become someone that you might not be or could be, will be, or even actually are inside. There's actually a book called Masquerade by Terry Pratchett we had a character who faced a very similar dilemma. Having this mask enabled him to be the man he longed to be, but without it, he was slow, dim-witted, and scared. And I see a lot of this in Takua. He is a clumsy character who grows beyond his current identity, while realizing this becomes who he was destined to be. Honestly, it's actually a strong story of character development, given this character an arc that is overshadowed by events because it feels like it's meant to be. Like he feels his life has no worth, therefore other things are allowed to overshadow his arc. But that makes it all the more triumphant when his arc comes to its climax and ends up pushing him into the light and embraces his identity. And you gotta admit, the symbolism is great in this. There was also a part of the movie where the Mask of Light blows up a rock face to reveal Takua's old look. That could be saying that him carving the mountain into his old face was his way of placing his old identity aside but still respecting where it led him. And his Koli move, how it didn't work in the match but, in, but at the end during the fight scene he succeeded. It just seemed to add up nicely. Something also has to be said for the music in this too. It just really gets you into the moods. It also helps make the environment seem all the more massive and engaging, mysterious and at times even suspenseful. I honestly think that this is a legend you must go and check out for yourself. And please, like and subscribe for more content. And remember by controlling the web, I control the world. End transmission.
But how did you keep the ceiling from collapsing on us, too? 